If you play Survival Hunter, this might be the most important video you ever watch. Big Mechs will be walking you step by step through gameplay from a skill cap member, and in just 20 minutes, you will get world class advice on how to do more damage, get better setups, and position just like a rank 1 hunter. If you want to see more videos just like this, be sure to check out skillcap.com, where you can find additional VOD reviews from Big Mechs and other rank 1 players. The same hunter you will watch today climbed over 400 rating last season after getting their gameplay reviewed by Big Mechs. So if you want to learn all the secrets to start climbing fast in season 2, be sure to check out skillcap.com after this and learn more about our 400 rating gain guarantee. Check out the links below after the video to get started. Anyway, let's dive in. Hello, hello, Fistflex here. So here we're going to be going over a PHP against a Boomy Destro with a Mistweaver. So I'd say right at the bat, the first thing that you should pay attention to is the fact that they have a Warlock. So playing Diamondize is not a bad call. You could also pick Interlope here, um, which is pretty half decent, especially with uh, if you're against Mistweavers, because I feel like usually whenever they have Port into the mix, it can be kind of... And like, you know, they can also use... Um, the revival to make it so they can just revival your your trap however if you do a stun into scatter and then half trap then you kind of like negate port and revival so that is also like an argument for why maybe sometimes it could be better to not actually have diamond eyes in the first place because it won't really be that necessary into like a windwalker team i mean i missed weaver team and then second of all, having interlope can be kind of cool, because now since you're using scatter on the healer, you won't really have that much cover for the boomy, so you can like spam clone your entire team. So having interlope for that could be kind of beneficial as well. But then again, these are mostly just preference type of things. Um, it doesn't really matter too much, as long as you, you know, like either you play diamond eyes, and then you have to deal with the warlock having like a fell hunter or a succubus. But then you know that like you don't have to ever cover or worry about like imp. And then also that means you can press scatter on the boomkin. So like, they both have their ups and downs, but that would be the, the first thing that I would pay attention to. Um, and uh, yeah, the rest of the talents, pretty good. Can't really complain about that. So let's see what, what we do in the opener here. Probably have to do like a warlock go, I would assume. So we get a flare out here, not bad at all. Start with a purge into a bomb, but not bad globals whatsoever so far. We get a stun here into a trap. Now here I would... I mean, you could, make, you could make the argument that maybe you should do one damage global ahead of time. But I guess the issue with that is like that now you're giving the monk free time to uh, port the trap. So th this could actually be pretty beneficial as well. Also, one thing that I noticed is that you have wake up bound to one of your DPS abilities. Uh, pro tip, don't do this. The issue with having wake up bound is that it can go on cooldown. So if you ever press play dead, let's say the boomy cast cyclone on your pet and you want to be able to like pet feign death the cyclone so you can still root you can you can freedom your healer out of the root beam. Or maybe it's like maybe it's just causing a chaos bolt or a fear or whatever on, on your pet, you know? Now you can't wake your pet up because the pet is you know the ability to wake them up is on CD. So make sure you go into here and you remove this. This can't be it. Uh, second of all, I feel like pressing Coordinate Assault this early doesn't really make that much sense. Because if you think about it, the globals that you want to press in this scenario is explosive. That is your number one thing that you want to press. The healer is an, in, a, in a trap right now, right? So he can't dispel it. Let's see what your damage globals are. You do cor you Coordinate into Kill Shot. Which is... The thing is, like, it's not bad. But it's bad in this case because now you're going to get less value out of your death chakrams and your flanking and your explosive shot because now your death chakrams you won't do 10% more damage with your coordinated assault kill shots um you don't really get the damage from death chakrams either which i would say is way higher than uh than two globals to basically just do like one kill shot because coordinated isn't really that big of a damage global and third off, you're missing out on the explosive. So here you would have done so much more damage. And plus your positioning would have been so much better as well. So I think that the, uh, the best thing you could have done here was maybe stand. Like after you got this trap, play in a way where you can avoid the boomies. Maybe like kite into here. And then just do like an explosive. And then death chakrams. And then maybe like one more bomb. And then maybe now you can press flanking strikes. I can guarantee if you do it like that, you're going to force the exact same CDs from the enemy team as if you press this, but now you don't really have, I mean, like, you kind of wasted this coordinate assault, I would say. Um, so that you get a scatter on the boomy, you freedom the healer, not bad at all. 
Um, but you see here, like, you, you get the CC, but, like, you don't really have that much follow-up. And then you send the explosive late, which I'm not really that big of a fan of, because there's no cover on the monk. Unless maybe your pala is going in for a blind right now, but you're giving so much time for him to be able to dispel this. Like, the one thing about explosive shot... Is that, I mean, especially whenever you're, you're playing with Diamond Eyes, the one strength about playing Diamond is that you can always have Explosive as your first global after trapping. Um, that's kind of one thing that I noticed also whenever, you're, whenever you were playing this game. Kind of never really pressed Explosive Shot in a good way. Um, but it's really, really strong. So you gotta remember, press Explosive whenever you're trapping. And if you're playing with a regular trap, the way that I would do it is usually you can do uh, Explosive into Stun, one damage global, and then trap. Um, or you can just like, maybe do, uh, let's say you're playing with like a regular trap, you can send Explosive at the last three seconds. So it still doesn't have a chance to be dispelled, but by the time it explodes, the trap is going to be over anyway, so it doesn't really matter that, that much. So that's kind of one thing that I would pay attention to as well. Um, second off, the core insult was also bad, because you're getting less value out of the bomb CDR. If you pay attention to your bombs while you're doing this entire rotation, you're going to see that you didn't really get that much value out of it either. So that's kind of also like some uh, mid-max thing you can do to get a lot more damage out. So do a flanking here. Uh, get port. Like, you still got, like, a lot of CDs. Like, it's not, it's not that uh, that the go was bad or whatever, because, you know, you got, like, wall, you got cocoon for some unknowable reason. But, like, at the same time, you would have gotten almost the exact same CDs, I feel like. And then, but then still have coordinated assault left. So, that's, that's kind of the, the, like, takeaway, because I feel like it's really easy to get into this line of thinking of, like, oh, yeah, well, we got CDs, so therefore what I did was good. Whereas I feel like it's it's better if you look at everything like super critically and be like, hmm, was this the most optimal way that I could have done my damage? And in this scenario, I I I don't think it uh, it it was. Like we're still sitting on so many bombs here. Like oh no, have to press the bomb key. The bomb key has not been pressed. The bomb pre it still hasn't been pressed. I'm I'm only looking at the bomb. Now we press a bomb. This is pretty good. Not bad. So we send a silence on the healer into a harpoon trap. Pretty good. So now we can't port. Excellent, excellent, not bad. Theoretically speaking, we could have also been like a little bit more Mi'kmaq here as well as like not really do the trap instantly. Because he can still sit through the entire silence and then we can trap at the end of the silence. But now we're talking about like super small things. But that's also kind of something that you can like pay attention to to just get like a little bit better. And at the same time, you could make the argument that it is better to, to go instantly because now he can't leg sweep you. Kinda. But in this case, I guess the monk... Yeah, that's just something that I kind of, like, p paid attention to. Like, he couldn't port, but I guess he could have technically, like, in cap you were sweeped. So, like, yeah, I would just wait until the silence is, is like, over. But that's just me, because then, like, that kind of has, like, a bigger chance of forcing Trinket here. Uh, but I think, yeah, you do end up getting Trinket anyway. So, I guess it's, like, the exact same outcome. Didn't really matter that much. So, now we need to kind of prepare for the next go. We're tanking so much damage here. Um, oh no, you're kiting in a way where like you're kiting away from your healer. So the one thing when it comes to this is like you kind of always need, need to pay attention to where your healer is. So if you go this direction, you're in line of your healer and you're lighting the boomy. But this is like the worst case scenario because now you're in line of the boomkin, which is killing you, which like the, the thing. But also you're not in line of your healer. This kind of seems to me like you kind of just spaced out and didn't really know where your healer was. So you just kind of walked in a random direction. That's like, kind of the vibe that I got. Um, so now you need to go set up some damage for the for the Warlock. I'm assuming you're going to do a go pretty soon because you have Horge coming up. So let's see what we are doing here. So I noticed that you have a... I saw that you were playing Spearhead. I'm trying to see where is Spearhead on your bar. Searching. Where is Spearhead? Because I know for a fact that you have it, right? Because I don't see a point in the game... Because here maybe maybe what you could have done, because now it's like hard to really connect. But you could have spearheaded over to the warlock over here and then go for a harpoon trap. Uh, and here you walk into a ball and you get a hodge, uh, but the hodge doesn't really do anything because first off the monk can just dispel it. Second off you kind of just get cloned, which is just, I mean this is kind of unfortunate. Um, so yeah, I'm not, not really too sure what you pressed spearhead on. Wait, you were playing it, right? Checking. Oh, it's over here. Oh, I see now. Wait, what, what did you press spearhead on? Checking. Oh, you press it here. 
Oh, oh, you press it for the damage. Oh, yeah, but it, it was the same outcome. Okay, never mind. Um, don't use spearhead like this. Uh, that's kind of one thing that I would say. For the most part, using it for the mobility will give you way more options when it comes to like how to how you can like maneuver around the arena. Because, I mean, here I wasn't even thinking about it because like in my head there was no time to use it. But uh, in this scenario, it would have been really, really good to do it because. You know, then the goal would have actually happened. Because the problem here isn't that the fact that your ret isn't ready, it's that you aren't ready. You aren't in position to do anything. So this is this is really good, right? Like going in for the clones, you can't get cloned. But like you don't have any mobility to get over here. So if you just stand over here, spearhead over to the to the guy in that Harpoon trap, you'll be in your healer line and you'll be losing him and you'll get the trap. So I guess technically you couldn't really do that here, but that's kind of something you have to think about as well when it comes to like using all of your mobility spells in a in a way that makes more sense. Um, also, whenever you were moving here, it would have been so much safer if you walked this way because then you would be able to line the boomy. Because you always have to think of it in a way where like, can you be in line of your healer and line someone? But also to do damage to the target that you need to attack. So here, right? If you stand over here, you'll be forcing the Boomy to get in closer to be able to attack you. If he is closer, that means that you have an easier time to follow to get like follow-up CC on him. So by you standing here, you're first making it really hard for your priest to ever follow up with a fear after your scatter, but you're also making it so like you're just kind of tanking damage at the same time. So uh, this type of positioning is like usually not really that good, so that's kind of something that I would uh, that I would check as well. Like, just look at, at your game and be like, hmm, was there like any point where I could have maybe positioned myself a little, little bit better, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, and now they, I mean, you still have a go, kinda. Uh, you can just like send a trap maybe because you, you're gonna have wings up in thirty. So if if you trap up, you know, like if you trap right now, then your trap is gonna be up anyway for wings. So like sinking them up like that isn't really like that bad of a thing to do either way um so i mean if, if i if i were you here i would just kind of send the trap or oh, you do go for the stump trap okay so never mind yeah you actually do get it and then and then you get pork this is good you didn't really commit that much uh, because you still have wings for for next trap so that is something that is uh pretty good and now you just sound like a random silence you're not really gonna get that much from it because you don't have cds your red pala doesn't really have that many cds so uh, JK, I guess they, he randomly died somehow. This is... Okay, even though you got Cocoon here, and I guess you have Wake of Ashes, I don't know if this was a particularly good play, but maybe the, the guy kind of panicked because you had no follow-up CC. He wouldn't die, but... I mean, people panic, you know? Like, it, it, it kind of happens. But I, I think that even if the enemy team did a bad play, I think it's still good to, like, look at it objectively and just think, like, hmm, but was it actually a good play, though? So here you're kind of tanking a lot of damage, not really necessary, but it just kind of happens sometimes. Meld the Chaos Bolt, okay. Wait. Did you turtle it? Oh. I guess like either way, this turtle won't really do anything. Because you, you press Meld. But may maybe you don't trust the Meld. Yeah. So the way that, that the Meld works into projectiles like Chaos Bolt is that... You can meld at any point, at any point when the Chaos Bolt is in the air, and then you can move, and the Chaos Bolt won't do damage to you. So, let's say for right here, right now you can just press meld. Like, you also have tactics, so like, you're, you're completely fine here. But this is, this is just like a panicky thing, like, you know, I'm not really gonna stress too much about it, but like, I just wanna let you know that this, this could have been, uh, or like, this wasn't really ne necessary here. Because if you know about like how meld works, then you can just press meld at any time. There's no super secret technique or whatever. You can just press meld whenever the, sp the spell is in the air. And then move around freely. You don't even need to be in meld anymore. And it won't do damage to you. So I guess I, I we will see if uh, having turtle at the very end could be a beneficial thing for your team. But I think now we have all of our CDs yet. So we get a thing. Uh, oh, this was... Ooh, this was kind of awkward. Um, possibly what I would have done here is... So, going in for the scatter is really good. This is this is not bad. But that now, you can just kind of go for like a coordinated assault. Or a disengage into Harpoon Trap. Because you're giving him so much time to preemptively uh, be annoying to you. 
like he can see you from like miles away like you need you need to be like way faster when it comes to like getting your cc here because you have this disengage available and you have coordinated assault so in this case you could have maybe even done like a coordinated assault onto the warlock disengage and then harpoon um i mean that might, might be like a mechanical hard thing to do but it's like things like this you need, need to practice on so you can become like faster and snappier because the issue is that the monk he could have just lined you here and then it would have been really really awkward kind of but I guess he just kind of walks into your face and you manage to get the trap off anyway. And then now you get the coordinate assault. Not bad. Uh, maybe freedom of the healer. Nice. Start doing some damage to the monk. Got bark skin. Can maybe go back on the warlock. Not bad. Got a fear too, which wasn't bad as well. Uh, maybe you can uh, kick the healer off. Or stun the healer. Ah, oh, he has revive on the armor. You can't really do that. Uh, this is going to be pretty ouchy. Oh. This grip was very awkward. Ah, this felt like a lot of panic. But um, basically, what could have happened here is because you have eagle up available, right? Like you don't technically need to be this exposed to do damage to them, right? Like nothing here is like telling you that like you have to go in, right? Um, so even if your priest gripped you, like after this, your first reaction should just be like, okay, my guy has bubble, I have eagle, just stand over here. And just maybe just do like a, you, you know, you can peek Serpent's thing, peek kill command, peek bomb, peek bomb again, and things like that. It may be even like a mongoose fight, so you still have like options, like you don't need to really play here, kind of. Oh, now you do. Okay, now you pop eagle. Okay, good, nice. Uh, awesome. So now you get the scatter on the guy, not bad. Maybe spearhead. Oh. Ooh, I mean... Priest still has two pain suppressions. I'm not really too sure. Maybe he's like vibing. Um. Yeah, maybe. Oof. Oh, this is kind of. Oh, this is kind of awkward actually. Um. Where? Um. Okay, so this is like. Your healer can't do this either. Like he doesn't have fear. What is he pushing in for? He can just kind of. I know this is like a vulgar review for, for like the hunter, but this is also like. You you were still fine after this. I mean, you have swap. Right? So as long as your healer doesn't get CC'd, like, right here. Or maybe you're fine in it anyway. Oh, never mind, you're actually alive. Okay, I thought you would die there. Never mind. <laughs> completely, like, completely alive. Yeah, yeah, true. You get the swap here. And here you get the damage. And you get the cocoon. Not bad. Now you should just be able to, like, wait and chill until the next go. And then maybe win. Like, standing here doing damage into this cocoon is not really gonna do anything. I mean, do you see how massive this cocoon is? My man walled for no reason. Okay, now you... I don't want to say that you automatically win, but you uh, would be in a very good uh, situation here if you line of sight the en enemy team. I need to drink some water. Mm. It's actually like a really good clone. Imagine you get a good drink too. Not bad, not bad. So here... Oh no, you used spear... No! When did you spearhead? I'm checking. Because here, even though you're really far away from them, did you spearhead now, maybe? Maybe I'm checking. Oh, now you do it, but this doesn't do anything. You see, you, it, it, it would have been a way better damage global. Like, you would do more damage by doing flanking, bomb, bomb, mongoose bite, than spearhead and then, like, mongoose biting three times. Like, spearheading like this is really, really bad. Because you still have, like, your bombs available that you need to press this also, so... Uh, yeah, you can do like so much more damage like on these goes. Also, what, what you're doing here is really, really good. Whenever you feign death and then you leave the circle so you can like, you know, survival tactics. Great. We like those, we like those. But here you can see how it's kind of awkward, right? Because you can punish the monk because he doesn't really have trinket because he, he human trinketed, right? So, if you would be able to play more safe at the pillar... Because when you have when you have when you have spearhead up, your range is insane. Like you can stand over here on this pillar, if you see my, my cursor, just spearhead to the monk, I mean the warlock, and then just harpoon trap. And it's so f it's like lightning fast. So like, it's gonna be like very hard for them to react, but now it's just kinda awkward because now you have to like slowly waddle in and then you know like like, I mean, maybe here you can, like, harpoon over to his little... I mean, you can uh, spearhead over to his little dragon. And then walk out a little bit and then harpoon trap. Like, you still have, like, so many options to, to do stuff, but... Whenever you're you're using um, 
spearheading that way, you can always become like very very limited in the in the way that you're doing your your stuff. And I think here you should probably just push into their pillars so you can line the boomy. Oh, but you play out in the open. Yeah, this is actually never good to do. So the issue with with playing in the in the open like this, as I said said earlier, that you're just in in boomy line for for no reason. You'll be in line of sight of the exact same people if you if both you and your ret go this way, because then you can line the boomy, because the boomy can just stand in in the middle of the map and just kind of bang both of you guys. Um, that also means that the that the, the the priest over here can hug this wall, so the boomy can't really stand. Like he has to either push into over here or pushing in over here. So, and then now I mean you just kind of die. I think maybe. Here it just, it just seemed kind of over. Yeah, this is just... So, I think some like some some key things to take away from this. I think it's like pretty awkward with the way that you guys were doing your damage. Or especially you, because you could do so much more damage with pressing like explosive shot on um, on your traps. And also death chakrams. And then flanking strikes. And then after you've done all of this and you don't have any anything else to press, then you can press core coordinated assault. Because the thing is like coordinate assault only really is super efficient as a damage global if you can do like coordinated into kill shot bomb, mongus bite, mongus bite, kill shot bomb, mongus bite, mongus bite, kill shot bomb. It becomes really awkward whenever your DPS rotation is like uh kill shot uh flanking, death chakrams, bomb, oh kill shot again, uh mongus bite, and then now it's like like a serpent thing, like it it it, it just becomes awkward. So because now you're also losing out on potential damage. It's not really about the damage that you're not dealing. It's the like potential damage in the future that you're lacking as well. So that's kind of something that I would uh, that I would look look for. So uh, don't waste spearhead. Use of it like use it more in a way where you can get goes. Uh, because you are using it for for the damage, but like the damage isn't that big of a deal, especially when you have. Explosive death chakrams and flanking available like it would be way better to press those and you had two bomb charges So it would almost always be way better to press those buttons first and then you can do the spearhead afterwards um, And then you know doing cleaner goes stuff like that maybe getting uh, You know pushing in for a fear on the monk as well could have also been a little bit potential uh, potentially good here, but uh, To me this just felt like very very awkward like you guys weren't really too coordinated, but it can be like a lot better though, so that's uh, that's something very like good, I guess, to try to think about. That like, uh, th th there were so many things that you guys could have done better, which is always good. Like I, I feel like it, it feels really bad whenever you play a matchup and it feels hopeless. But here it was like, you did a lot of mistakes, but you still got a lot of CDs, and it was kind of close, right? Like he doesn't have wall, he doesn't have anything, you know. Like he can die here for sure, skis, because he doesn't have trinket. This is just like a. Um, the human trinket so like whenever this is 30 seconds that's when his trinket is, is actually back uh but yeah that's gonna be uh it's gonna be it for me hey guys we hope you enjoyed another vod review let us know your thoughts on this deep dive did you like it if so what spec should we cover next and while you're doing that we want to tell you more about skillcap.com we work with the best players in wow to produce hundreds of website exclusive guides and now with a skillcap membership you can even get personal support from rank one players including big mechs in our ask a pro forum on discord every season we help players just like you hit their rating goals from rival all the way to rank one so what are you waiting for visit the links below to get started on your next pvp journey which includes a rank up guarantee as long as you use the videos on our website all right guys that wraps it up for this one we wish you the best of luck on your weekly vault thanks for watching see you soon